This is a neat little retro CPM computer based on the Z80 microprocessor family that I purchased and will be demonstrating. Hello, I am the Mighty Pez, and in this video I will provide an overview and getting started demonstration of the tiny MinZ CPM retro computer. So please join me. My motivation for buying this computer was to learn the 1970s era CPM operating system and learn how to program within the constraints of that era's technology. In this video, I will start with a brief overview of the features and technology contained within this specific MinZ system before proceeding on to an overview of the steps that I have learned that are necessary to start using CPM on the system. This part of the demonstration will be focused on the CPM operating system and will be applicable to other systems using CPM as well. Some of the steps I will guide you through include setting up the terminal connection so that you can access the command line from your PC, using CPM utilities to transfer files between CPM and the PC, and managing files using CPM's concept of user areas. I purchased this device from the Tindy website for the purpose of learning both the CPM operating system and learning to program the Z80 instruction set. The computer is built around the Zilog Z180 CPU, which has a direct lineage and is fully compatible with the venerable Z80 architecture. As you can see, the developer did not lie when he described this system as being very small cased. It is two by two inches in size. Let's take a very quick tour of the PCB starting in the lower left. As you can see, there is an SD card for storage. That is what winds up being the C drive. Next, you'll see the Zilog Z180 CPU. This motherboard is clocked at 36 megahertz. Uh, it's also sold in a 33 megahertz option. In the upper right, you will see two stacked memory ICs. The device is sold as either a 512 or 1 megabyte option, and this is the 1 meg option with, with two 512 KB memory ICs. And next, you'll notice uh, the flash memory, which contains the BIOS. Taking a look at the bottom side of the PCB, we see a UART for USB support a custom program CPLD logic device for I.O. and addressing support, and in the very right corner, a real-time clock that is battery-backed. Upon connecting the MinZ CPM computer to your PC, two additional COM ports should become active. As you can see here, when I connect up the MinZ computer, two additional COM ports show up on my PC. Both of these are USB to UART bridges. One of them will be for terminal communication, and one of them, as shown later, will be for file transfer purposes. If these ports do not show up when plugging your MinZ computer to your PC, it means that you need to download and install the Silicon Labs USB driver. On one of my PCs, I was able to connect straight away with no issues. On the second of my nearly identical Win 11 PCs, I did in fact have to download and install the driver. Once we have ensured that the MinZ is powered on and that we have two active COM ports for the system, we are ready to begin communicating with the system. My terminal program of choice is TerraTerm as it supports a VT100 standard terminal 
and provides the file transfer utilities that we can use to copy files between this system and our PC. First, we must ensure that our terminal serial connections are set up for the proper baud rate of 115-200. Next, we will push the reset button on the MinZ. This will cause the CPM banner to be displayed on the terminal use for command line. In this case, COM3. Although the port may vary in other setups. The other terminal will not have an interactive command prompt, in this case COM4, and will be used for file transfer. Initially, the system is configured with three drives. The A drive is a RAM disk. This disk will be empty upon initial power up, and although we'll lose contents when the device is disconnected, it will retain data across system resets. The C drive resides on the SD card and will initially be empty. This is where we will put our personal files. P is the ROM disk and is where the CPM system utilities are located. Although the description says ROM disk, it actually resides in flash memory and is writable. However, as flash memory wears out more quickly with multiple rewrites, it is preferable for user files to be written to the SD drive. Now to demonstrate transferring files between the device and your personal computer. For this, there are two CPM utilities that come preloaded with this device on the P drive, PC Get and PC Put. There are two steps to this process, and it is important to do them in the correct order as the CPM, PC Get, and Put utilities have a short timeout. First, we must go to the terminal that is not being used for command line input. This will be our file transfer COM port. In this example, we will be copying files from the PC. From the terminal, we will select Transfer, X Modem, Send. Remember that this step is sending from the point of the view of the PC. Select the file you want to send. In this case, we select Zork1.com. From the CPM command prompt, we are on the C drive, but we are going to run the executable PC get from the P drive, with the parameter being the name of the file that we will expect it to be written with. Note the file name is not transferred by X modem, and you must specify the desired name. Now, we will transfer the Zork1.dat data file. Having transferred our files, we will now run the CPM80 version of the classic game Zork in all of its 1980s text-based glory to validate that it works. Zork doesn't lie. No computer should be without this game. One of the peculiarities of CPM 2.2 and its step-sibling MS-DOS 1.0 
was that there was no support for subdirectories on the file system. A workaround in CPM for file organization is the concept of user space. By default, you are placed into user 0 and all of the files we have been working with up till now are in the user 0 space. There are 16 supported user spaces and by switching users we no longer see user 0's clutter. So let's do a directory of C in our current user space and verify that we have access to PC Git from the P drive. Then we see what happens when we change to user 1. As you can see, we no longer see user 0 files in C. However, we can also no longer see utilities in the P drive. So how are we going to get PC Git or the file transfer utility PIP to get files into user 1. Hint, pip can copy files from another user, but can't copy files to another user. So now we have a chicken and egg issue, as we don't have access to user zero utilities. Thankfully, we have a workaround. Let's go back to user zero. For this workaround, we need the pip file transfer command. We will run the stat utility on the pip.com executable. We need to file away the number 58, the number of records, as this will become important in a minute. Now we will run pip.com. Then we hit return to exit. The key is that CPM doesn't clear the executable from memory until a new executable is run. But what do we do with the knowledge that pip is still in memory? Let's change to user1. Again, you can see that there are no files under user1 in the C drive. Then we run the save command. Note, the save command is a built-in command and is not a utility program stored on the file system. As such, it is available to use as any user. This command will save a specified number of blocks from program memory to disk using the supplied file name. Remember 58 blocks from the previous command output? Now that we have pip in user 1 space, we can copy additional utility files from user space 0. Here we copy pcgit to c from p colon pcgit.com. Notice the option g in brackets, g0, specifies the source to be user space 0. The destination is always the current user space. Now we have the facilities to pull any necessary utilities into alternate user spaces. Let's verify that PC Git works by pulling the Star Trek basic game from our PC. Then we use pip to copy Microsoft Basic to our current user. With these steps, we have a world of 1970s and 1980s Z80 CPM code available to us via the internet. I hope this video was informative, and I hope that whether it be this device, other modern Z80 systems, historical CPM computers or emulators, you will explore the world of classic computing. Thank you.